And Robert Green, welcome to the Tony Legend Show. Well, thank you very much indeed, Tony. Thank you very much for inviting me along. No problem, it's a pleasure. Now, for folks who don't know anything about you, please fill us in with just about who you are and what you've been up to. Yes, indeed. Uh, well, uh, I'm a broadcaster and, uh, as far as the relevance to uh, tonight's discussion is concerned, an investigator. And I, I represent uh, Holly, uh, uh, Holly Gregg and her mother Anne. Um, and, of course, this is what the story is all about, the uh, horrific uh, uh, sort of crimes that have been committed against uh, Holly uh, and other children. And, of course, uh, crimes against her mother and her uh, uncle as well, who uh, we have good reason to believe was murdered. All right, and what made you decide to get involved in this case? Uh, well, I was invited to by uh, a Scottish group um, oh, just over a year ago. Uh, I'd given a speech up in Scotland, and uh, I was approached by the Scotland Against Crooked Lawyers, the chairman there, uh, Stuart Usher, who's been fighting against corruption in the legal system in Scotland for many years, very courageously. And he approached me, uh, I was, had another big case on at the time, nothing to do with Scotland, and he said to me, Robert, uh, there's... There's a lady in Shropshire with a daughter who has Down syndrome. They've been forced to flee from Scotland. They're from Aberdeen. Uh, and the story that they will relate to you is the most terrible one I have ever heard. Could you possibly have a word with them and uh, see if you can help in any way? Well, I had a lot on my plate and uh, I kind of didn't really have the time to do it. I didn't think I would have the time to do any, anyone else's story uh, real justice. But uh, I spoke to Anne. And uh, when she told me exactly what had happened and gave me all the details, uh, I really felt I could do nothing else but to try my best in the time that I had available to, uh, to see what I could do for her. All right, now, although there are still huge hurdles to overcome, how do you feel about the progress uh, made in Holly's case recently, especially in relation to the public awareness? Because I know a lot more people are uh, aware of this case now. Yes, the public awareness has been a very much a key matter for this, and uh, I think I'd like to take this opportunity of uh, thanking all of those of you who uh, offered your support. I've had wonderful messages, phone messages, cards, letters, uh, since I was uh, imprisoned on the 12th of February. So I do thank everyone for all that, but not so much for myself, but for Anne and Holly. Uh, they're the ones who've been through hell on this, and the support of the public has uh, meant so much to them. All right, now, a, a bit on, earlier on in the week, we went down and met Holly Gregg and her mother Anne, and I did an extensive interview with Anne and Holly, and we covered loads of issues connected to the case, but let's just go to the first part of that interview now with Anne Gregg. And uh, earlier in the day, just before we, we arrived at her house, she'd been a guest on Radio in America, and I began by asking Anne what all she had discussed on the US talk show, and I have to warn you folks that this interview contains some explicit details. The main part of the story was, you know, basically getting the whole story out. I told them about, you know, what happened when they came to my house to, to section me. Uh, you know, how I was physically, uh, you know, malhandled, you know, thrown on a floor, uh, trousers and pants taken down in front of my neighbours, I was screaming, uh, I was injected and knocked out. Then they went into, and taken to, uh, you know, a mental hospital. My daughter was up in the house. She had seen me in the car park because I had gone down to the, the bin room, uh, you know, to put stuff there. And they went into my home. They didn't even ask her if she had a relative that she could stay with. They just physically took her and put her into care. And while she was in care, they took her to see her father. Now, this was the man that she had already told the police uh, had abused her. I told him about that. I told him about the fact that in 1990, uh, in Holly's medical notes, we have found paperwork uh, from uh, Dr. Paul Carter, uh, who was the, the hospital doctor elected to Beechwood School in Aberdeen. And uh, he had examined Holly and found a, uh, a sexually transmitted disease. And he wrote letters to her GP and also... Uh, to her headmaster, and none of those people acted on the, the letter. Uh, we have been in contact with uh, Paul Carter, and you know he is absolutely flabbergasted that this has happened. We know for a fact that Grampian police have never even interviewed him, because he was waiting uh, to be interviewed uh, by Grampian police, and that never transpired. Also, uh, in 1992, when Holly was 11, uh, again in her medical records, it states that one of her teachers was concerned because Holly was showing signs of uh, pelvic thrusting with you know, one of her little friends at school. And again, that was reported 
uh, to the headmaster and our GP and again nothing was done about it and I wasn't told anything about it. Around about the same time also in our, our medical notes Holly was complaining about a sore bottom and every week I was taking her up to the, uh, the doctors and you know telling them this and she had a, a, like a red mucus you know coming uh, from her bottom and uh, you know she was thoroughly examined and they said it was a fissure right now, in Holly's statements to uh, Grampian Police, she tells Grampian Police that uh, she, you know, got anal sex, you know, by these people as well. And this was what was causing this, you know, fissure. All right, that was Anne Gregg talking to me earlier on in the week, and there are loads more parts of that interview coming up on the show between 9 and 10 p.m. I'm um, joined in the studio, as I said, by Robert Green. He is Anne and Holly's. Uh, legal advisor Robert, you've seen a lot of documentation uh, concerning this case. Let's please now just get into some of the evidence that we have, which is important to this story. Yes, indeed. Now, I think I, I must say at this point that uh, I uh, was charged after my uh, incarceration at the police station in Aberdeen, and I am on bail at the moment, and the conditions are very, very draconian, I think, so uh, I don't want to break my bail conditions, so to a certain extent I am constrained by the answers that I would like to give. I'd love to be open, as open to you as possible, but um, there are people who would like to put me away for the next 110 days without trial, so uh, I uh, have to be a little bit careful uh, what I'm saying on this. However, I must say that looking at my bail conditions, which is a, pu a public document which I have in front of me at the moment, it does actually say that I must not do anything to try to stop justice being carried out, which I find a little bit ironic. I think those remarks might well be addressed to certain other people in Scotland rather than to me. Indeed, the whole reason that you're doing this is to try and achieve some justice, so it's a... Uh... It's very backwards, the whole thing. But, yeah, just get, let's get into some of the documents you've got there and just uh, yes. some of the stuff that we, we can talk about. Yes, certainly. I think perhaps one thing that uh, has come up that you were aware of is uh, when Anne was uh, sectioned on the 5th of September 2000. And uh, one of the, the problems that arose from that was uh, Anne, of course, uh, shortly afterwards uh, was able to get out of the institution and uh, went to uh, a prominent doctor called uh, Dr. Ellen Smith, uh, one of the leading experts in Scotland in psychiatric welfare. And uh, Dr. Smith uh, gave her a full analysis, which Anne asked for. Anne said, look, look at me, take care, look, do any assessment you want of me. I want your real honest opinion about my mental state. And uh, Dr. Smith gave a full assessment, and basically speaking, Anne is a perfectly sane person who should never have been uh, sectioned in the first place. And the doctor who was in charge of the sectioning the, uh, was a man called Dr. Alistair Palin, and he also had to agree at the end of the day that uh, uh, there was nothing wrong with Anne after first suggesting there was schizophrenic when uh, they took her into, uh, into hospital. Um, I'd perhaps like to extend on that because uh, there is a, a document that had been checked by Dr. Smith. Uh, she let, then went to her solicitors called uh, Yvonne McKenna, who uh, lives in a place called Glenrothes in Fife, and asked her to write to the Mental Welfare Commission for Scotland to ask for documents about the sectioning because Anne, because of uh, perhaps things that happened in the past, felt that uh, this was uh, uh, kind of done maliciously and unlawfully, and so she naturally wanted to find out who had authorised uh, the, uh, the sectioning. Now, don't forget, this is a very serious matter because Anne was a lady there with... Uh, a daughter who had uh, Down syndrome, she was looking after on her own, and uh, the daughter had been, uh, obviously just found out that she'd been, uh, had some terribly traumatic times, which uh, we've been talking about earlier. And um, it was, obviously, it must be a very serious matter to deprive a child like Holly uh, of her mother in those very vulnerable circumstances. So, uh, the sister, Miss McKenna, McKenna, wrote to the Mental Welfare Commission on the 13th of October asking for the documents. This is like just over five weeks after Anne was sectioned. I have a reply here in front of me. The Mental Welfare Commission for Scotland, Chairman Ian J. Miller, Director Dr. J. A. T. Dyer, and it's dated the 1st of November 2000. And it reads, very short letter, Dear Miss McKenna, the heading Anne Elizabeth Mackey, which was Anne's married name. She now refers to a maiden name, Greg, which is perfectly understandable, I'm sure. And what uh, the, uh, the author of this had to say was, I am sorry for the delay in replying to your letter of the 13th of October 2000. 
I have now been able to search the Commission's records. I can find no trace of any report relating to Mrs. Mackey, nor of any communication to or from Messrs. Bruce MacDonald and Company or with Dr. Palin. I am sorry I am unable to help you further.